welcome to another episode of Tickle Talk Show, where we encourage a culture of recognition. Thanks so much, guys, for interacting with our for social media pages at Tickle Chat on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We really enjoyed it. We saw some tongue in the cheek comments as well. So thanks so much, Alberic, my co presenter. We're back again. Nice to have you, man. How's Danny? Yes, great to be here. Um, we've got a very special guest on our show today. Um, a player that stepped his way to the top of the IRB World 7 circuit um, and one of the true legends of the game. So let's welcome Fabian Juris. Hi guys, uh, thank you for inviting me to your show. Uh, it's nice to be here. Fabian, tell us more about the legend Fabian Juris. I don't know about legend, but okay, I'll tell you more about myself. So I was born in Grahamstown um, in the Eastern Cape. Uh, my schooling I did in Grahamstown Primary School and High School. Uh, I went to St. Mary's Primary School. Um, uh, high School I went to Mary Waters and then I did a bridging year at Kingswood College, which is also in Grahamstown, a private school there. Um, and then after school I went to uh, the Technicon in Port Elizabeth. Um, uh, when I, st I started playing uh, rugby, uh, primary school, I watched the big boys play uh, during break time. Always wanted to get involved uh, with the grade seven standard favor, standard fives and standard fours that time. Um, but they were uh, a bit older than me. The, those guys at the time were 14 and 15 years old, They're not 12 and 13 like now. So they were a bit uh, big, but it was nice uh, watching them play. And then I used to play in the street as well with the boys. A bit of, Rugby with uh, plastic bottles and stuff like that, yeah. So, um, and then just got into rugby, started playing when I went to stand four, playing with the big boys, break time, yeah. So, that was nice. Fabian, um, uh, tell me, you watched the, the bigger guys play and, and where, where, where did the spark come from to, to become a professional rugby player? Can you recall where, where that originated from? Not really. I just like sport from a young age because I played tennis, cricket, soccer, all types of sport. I said uh, probably high school uh, in grade what, standard 8, grade 10. Um, when I played my first first team rugby, for the first team rugby, I played my first game in standard eight, uh, grade 10. And then I thought to myself, okay, I'm the smallest guy on the field. I play, I'm playing against these big boys, so I must have some talent or something must be, yeah. <laughs> there must be something there. And then I just played and played and played. And then after school, just before uh, in matric, um, Eastern Province approached me uh, about a contract um, while I was still in matric and then it started there, I'd say. Fabian, you've obviously become a, a seven superstar. Um, but what makes a sevens player such a specialist in his field? I think uh, for a good sevens player, you have to have a good uh, sidestep on you. You have to have speed. Obviously, your skill sets, your passing, catching, um, and your defense as well, because there's no place to hide on the sevens field. So all of those things have to be spot on. There's no, like I said, there's no place to hide. So if you're struggling with the passing, especially to the left or to the right, uh, the coaches will pick, pick up on that. In defense, you're one-on-one -on -one against a attacker. You have to make that tackle. So all those things together make, makes a good sevens player. And that, that is what sets us apart from the 15s because in 15s you can hide. Especially if there's a rack, you just go stand behind the rack. You don't need to make a tackle. You take a break. In sevens, there's no time for taking breaks. You have to be busy all the time. Yeah, certainly. And, and, in, in, and in South African context, uh, we mentioned earlier the legend Fabian Juris, and that is what you are. Uh, you've played on the IRB circuit for many, many years under various coaches. You played 15s as well. Any coach that made a significant contribution to your holistic uh, development as a rugby player? Well, for me, all my coaches uh, made a difference because in rugby you always learn. So uh, not one, but all of them made it. They made a difference in in my playing career because I learned from all of them, and that's the most important thing that you're always learning and don't think you know everything about rugby. 
So I'd say all of my coaches throughout my career uh, helped me a lot. Now, Fabian, you obviously faced many, many world-class players. Who stands out as your toughest opponent? Well, there was this one guy uh, from Samoa. Uh, he played for the Hurricanes as well. Um, Lomi Fa'atau, quite a big guy. Uh, when we used to play sevens, uh, he t always tried to run over me. And I always run around him. So that, <laughs> that was the way we used to play against each other. And he, I must say, was was uh, one of the toughest guys I played against. Yeah, Fabian, uh, and also you, we've asked you now the question on the field. There's a lot of things in sevens that happens off the field. Uh, the camaraderie between between players from different countries, uh, sometimes sharing hotels on the circuit, uh, various uh, various competitions. Tell us a bit more about your experience as a professional player, the linkages, the bondages that created lifelong friendships. Uh, that was created on that circuit off the field uh, as players. Yeah, off the field, as you said, all the guys, we stay in one hotel, we go to breakfast together, lunch, supper, although different times sometimes. But um, especially the meeting up with the Fijians, Samoans, uh, New Zealanders a bit, those guys are very humble. And it's nice talking to them uh, off the field as well. Uh, like you said, the friendship, friendships we made, it's nice getting in touch with those guys. Uh, like, yeah, in Dubai, we play in the Vets tournament. And some of the guys that I played against uh, back in the day, we played together now in the same team uh, in, yeah, in Dubai in, in the Vets tournament. So it's nice catching up with those guys, chatting to them, how they're doing, families and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's always great catching up with those guys. So what a lot of people don't know, Fabian, is you're currently residing in the UAE. How does a normal day in the life of Fabian Juris look like? Yes, for me, uh, I stay an hour outside uh, of Dubai and I work in Dubai. So I normally get up at nine o'clock uh, in the morning, uh, drive to work, get there just before 11 when my work starts, sit down in front of a computer doing some ses session plans because I coach uh, young kids from the ages of eight up to 17, 18 years old. So I have to do a session plan. After that, um, at about two or so, I go to schools where we coach the kids. And then we have another break. And then I start at five again until after seven in the evening. And then I drive back home where I get home at about nine o'clock. Uh, my wife doesn't like that, but <laughs> I have to do it. So that's a typical working day. Um, when I'm off, I normally sit in front of the TV, play PlayStation. <laughs> and my wife wants to go out, we go to a, a park, uh, a water park or a uh, Ferrari world. So yeah, that's basically what we do here, in, or what I do when I'm in, at home or working. Uh, Fabian, you are now a retired rugby professional. How did you transition from a life of sport to a life off the playing field? I must say that the first six months was a difficult time for me um, because I didn't, after I retired, I didn't have a job, I didn't have money coming in. Um, so all my savings I had to use in those six months that I saved up for, or a later time. Uh, but like I said, it was difficult. Then I got a job at Herbert uh, Primary School um, as the rugby coach, uh, director, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So I worked there for five years. I must say when I started the job, things started to get a bit easier um, money-wise because I had some money coming in and not everything going out. But um, I must say the move to the UAE helped a lot with that. Uh, I'm stable now. Everything is nice and comfy. So the move here really helped with that, yeah. But like I said, it's very import, uh, important for young boys out there that's playing and making a lot of money now that they invest that money wisely and just look after, after their money. Yeah. That, that's, that's very important, yes. Very, very wise words. And I'm, I'm delighted to hear that you involved in, in coaching in the UAE. Um, we as South Africans, uh, we, we pride ourselves on our rugby performances in 15s as well as 7s. Um, and, and our recent performances shows that we are, we are well up there with, with, with the global leaders on the 7th circuit. 
Fabian Juris as an ex rugby player, uh, a retired sevens player. Do you see yourself, you know, um, coming back into the system that that that, uh, that which you were a part of for so long, maybe as a coach? Jeez, I've been trying to get into that system for a while now. It's difficult. <laughs> Uh, it's all about the opportunity. Um, I know uh, everyone wants wants an opportunity, so it's very difficult getting in there because there's established guys there already. Uh, they've also been part of the system, playing and now being coaches. But uh, I'm just waiting. Hopefully, I'll get an opportunity to show what I can do uh, coaching-wise. Um, yeah, so I'd love to get involved and just work with the with the guys. Yes. If I mean, just on, on, that, on that question, um, uh, just to share with us as well, the differences uh, or comparisons between uh, rugby structures in the UAE and, and, and back home. Obviously, it's two worlds apart in terms of performances on the field. But tell us a little bit more about the development happening there in the UAE from a coaching point of view. When I, when I worked for the UAE Federation, we did a lot of work in schools trying to uh, get the boys to get involved in rugby, but it's very difficult because their mindset is just on playing football, soccer. When you go to a school and you come there with a rugby ball, they ask, what this, what this? And then you must explain to them and then they just want to play football. But um, with the get into rugby program, the UAE is actually was when I was working there, we were third behind South Africa and India. So we had a lot of kids getting involved. We had... Um, days where we had schools coming out to play. Um, but at the moment, things are a bit difficult because the UAE, um, there was, we were three, four, four development officers doing different uh, regions in the UAE. But now there's only two. Um, they're struggling with, with money, but um, like it's very difficult for them at the moment. Um, it's not like back home in South Africa where we get kids that want to play. They yeah. want to play rugby. Yeah, you have to try and <laughs> work it out with the kids so that they can play rugby and a bit of football at the end. So, yeah. Um, that's fantastic, Fabian. Uh, you know, you've touched on you know, giving some tips to rugby players who do look to a life after rugby. But what advice do you have to, to youngsters that want to follow a career as a professional rugby player? I think it's very important for kids that have talent to work hard as well. Because people say talent beat, beats hard work and hard work beats talent, but it's both, you need to have both because you have, need to have a work ethic. So if you put in the hard work and you have the talent, uh, I don't think anything can stop you then because you've got the talent and you put in the hard work. So just keep on working and working and never give up on your dreams. Just follow and keep on working hard. Yeah, that's all I can say to the youngsters out there. And enjoy it. Uh, don't, don't uh, when you have to go out and practice, don't go, why do I have to do this? Just enjoy it. Because at the end of the day, hard work does pay off. And if you have the talent, you will definitely get to the top. Fabian, you're well known for your sidestep. Um, according to you, who is the best sidestep in SA Rugby? I must say Roscoe. Roscoe probably at South Africa at the moment. Cheslin. Uh, Roscoe just by a bit, uh, bit better. But if you, I promise you, Fiji, the guys there, they just born with it. They, <laughs> when they <laughs> when they born, they just sidestep out of there. And, 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 and Fabian, the two players you've mentioned now, Cheslin, Colby, Roscoe, Spe Speckman, all started their trade on the seventh circuit. And they went on to entertain us, scored brilliant tries on the 15th circuit. Um, two of the better sidesteppers, as you said, but also two players that actually um, scratched that notion of rugby is only for players big of stature. Uh, your comments uh, for younger players, smaller sets coming through, wanting to play sevens, but also wanting to move into fifteens, like Cheslin and Roscoe, as you mentioned. Yeah, I think when uh, uh, Hugh uh, started playing for the Springboks, I think the big and small debate stopped. I think 
I hope it stopped there because we've got guys like you said, like Chancellor now, not the biggest guy in the world, but he makes tackles, he he runs into big players, he sidesteps them, he doesn't run into them, yeah. So I think that is a bit the the big small debate is, uh, has been pushed out. I, like I said, I hope so. And there's one guy from um, New Zealand, uh, Damien McKenzie, not the biggest of guys, but he's one of the better players in New Zealand and he's a He's a small guy. I think he was 79, 80, 83 cages around there. So there is hope for the for the smaller players. Seven, obviously, after a very illustrious career, what would you have done differently? Knowing what you know now, what would you have done differently back then? Well, um, I I studied for one year. I think I would have changed that and do the three years. Um, I made sure that I invested my money um, properly, uh, not spend money on unnecessary things. But uh, as a young guy, you do that. Um, but surely make sure that you get a proper education and make sure that you invest your money properly. I think that's the two things that I would change if I had the chance again. But yeah. Wise words, wise words from, from Fabian Juris. Fabian, our slogan of, of Tackle Chat is to encourage a culture of recognition where we say thank you to our change makers in society. And today we want to recognize Fabian Juris, the legend, the sevens player, uh, a person that entertained me, entertained many viewers across the world, uh, putting South Africa on the map as a sevens player, many medals around your neck, many accolades came your way, top try scorer for many years on the circuit, not only as, as, as from a South African point of view, but from a global point of view. Thanks so much for what you've done, for putting rugby on the map for smaller players, putting rugby on the map for, 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 for young ones at Grahamstown, where you come from. You are a true legend. It's an absolute honor to have you on Tackle Chat. Please continue with the brilliant and great work in the UAE. We are excited to welcome you back in the future to contribute to South African rugby once again. So thanks so much, Fabian, for being here. Go well and good luck. Thanks for having me, guys. It was a pleasure talking to you. The legend Fabian Juris Alberic. An end of another episode. What an episode it was. Fabian Juris, what a man. Uh, straight talk. But to have a guy of his caliber on the show, absolutely fantastic. No, for sure. Like, uh, Fabian, we're just, we just honored by, by what you've shared with us. And uh, we appreciate it. And uh, yeah. Thanks a lot, man. Thank so, you. ladies and gentlemen, Fabian Jury is the legend. What an honor. Please comment on the show. Please chat with us at Tackle Chat on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. This is Tackle Talk Show, where we encourage a culture of recognition. Until next time, cheers. Ooh.